Using Inquiry as a Learning Activity. This is part eight in the Teaching Method series. I'm Dr. Grady Roberts from the University of Florida. This presentation will be guided by three essential questions. What is inquiry? How does inquiry relate to learning modalities and to Dale's Cone of Experience? And how can I use inquiry as a learning activity? We'll first refer back to our taxonomy of learning activities that we first introduced in an earlier part of this series. If you notice, inquiry is on the right-hand side underneath the student-centered activities. Looking at the box that shows the interactions, we notice a double line or a double arrow connecting the students and students, and then broken double lines collecting, connecting the teacher and the students, uh, indicating that there's a lot of interaction between students and a little bit of interaction between the teacher and students. If we look down a little bit further below on the autonomy box, we notice that uh, in inquiry, students have a little bit more control than the instructor, than the teacher does, but the teacher still does have some level of control in, in the learning environment. Considering learning modalities, uh, inquiry can appeal to visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. Your visual learners will be pleased to, to be able to see and observe things. Your auditory learners will, will be happy to be able to listen to things, and kinesthetic learners will be uh, happy because they can touch things and do things. And so inquiry has a, has a good, well-rounded balance of appealing towards visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. Taking a look at Dale's cone of experience, inquiry can be implemented in a lot of different ways, and so in practice it can really fall almost anywhere on Dale's cone of experience. However, most of the time when we develop inquiry activities, we're going to be doing the real thing or simulating the real experience. And so we'll be at the more concrete end of Dale's cone of experience. There are five essential features of inquiry. The first, learners are engaged by scientifically oriented questions. The second, learners give priority to evidence which allows them to develop and formulate explanations. The third, learners formulate explanations from evidence to address scientifically oriented questions. Fourth, learners connect explanations to scientific knowledge. And fifth, learners communicate and justify their proposed explanations. So to put this in a, in a more simpler way, learners are presented with a question. They gather information and data to answer that question. Based on that data, they develop a, a decision or a result or a conclusion. Then they connect that conclusion back to the existing knowledge and then they communicate what they saw. Inquiry can be implemented in a lot of different ways in the classroom and this chart shows different variations on how that might happen. Down the left hand side we show the five essential features of inquiry that we just talked about and then the the four columns on the right show different variations of inquiry. On the left hand side of that those columns are ways that are more self-directed for the learner and less teacher directed on the right hand side are ways that are are more teacher directed and less student directed i'll leave this up for just a minute and let you kind of take a look at the different ways that inquiry could be implemented So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that inquiry can be implemented in the classroom. Now let's break it apart and look at some of the specifics of, of how to do inquiry. Um, we said the first thing was to pose a scientifically oriented question. These can be either inductive or deductive. If it's an inductive question, either the student or the teacher can generate the question. But the key thing is that you begin with an unknown answer. And so you've posed a question that you don't really know the answer to. And the purpose of the inquiry is to, to answer that question. You can also begin from a deductive perspective where the teacher generates the question. You begin with a known fact. And the purpose of the inquiry is really to test the fact or to confirm the fact and confirm that information that was already known. The second part was to gather evidence. And when we talk about gathering evidence, we're talking about data or information. And so we can use primary data, which is based on direct observations from the students. And so this might be done through an experiment, interviews, etc. 
or we could use secondary data, which is based on the observations of others. And so this might be done through looking at books, through the internet, interviewing experts, etc. Regardless of what sort of data that you do use, it's very likely that you're going to want the students to summarize the data in some sort of a graph, a table, a figure, a chart, or something. And, and so it's a good opportunity to, to practice those extra skills with your students as you're walking through an inquiry lesson. So once you have the data and the information, the next step is to formulate an explanation. And so what do the data say? Based on the data that you've collected, you want to make a conclusion. And if you created a hypothesis earlier on, you want to either reject or accept that hypothesis. So you've collected the data. What does the data say to you? What's the conclusion that you can draw from that data? The next step is to connect the results to scientific knowledge. And so what do our results really mean? So we, we collected this data, we made a decision. What does it mean? How does it compare to what we know about science? How do our results compare to others? Are they applicable to other situations? And so it's kind of the big picture. This is what we found, but what does it really mean in the big picture? The final part of the inquiry process is to communicate and justify what you found. So we want to talk about how well did we conduct our research? How do we disseminate our results? What could we do better? What's the next step? And so it's that really that we did this, now what? So let's talk for just a moment about uh, best practices for you as an instructor trying to use inquiry as a learning activity. Well, one of the first things we want to look at is what do we expect students to do in an inquiry activity? We want students to make observations. We want students to pose or respond to researchable questions. We want students to formulate predictions, to plan procedures, to collect, organize, and display data, analyze data and craft tentative inferences, share their ideas and results with a group, and revise, if necessary, the evaluation and, and move forward. And so we want students to be very actively involved in constructing their own knowledge based on what they've saw. Now, what do we want the teachers to be doing? In other words, what are teachers doing in an inquiry? So teachers will ask questions that require thinking or, and or action on part of the students, listen to students and respond in ways to encourage students to examine and investigate ideas, promote multiple ways to investigate ideas, and to develop classroom characteristics that place value on student communication, diversity, and intellectual freedom. And so as the instructor, you want to set all this up and then get out of the way and let the students do the work and just be there to support and facilitate their learning. Another question you might have is how much time do I need to spend if I'm going to plan an inquiry activity? Well, an inquiry activity could be done in as short as a class period or less than a class period. Um, a short activity where you have students investigating a question and then reporting on what they found. Um, but often in practice, it, an inquiry activity could take several days or even several weeks or even several months. And so, for example, a, a science project might fit into this category to where it, it's a long, drawn-out process where students are collecting data over time to answer a question. Um, and so as you're planning activity, as you're planning an inquiry activity, you've got to think about how much time do you have available and how do you want to set this up. So let's go back and look at the teacher's role again. The teacher's role is to set up the context. So come up with a question or solicit questions from the students. And then to facilitate the process by providing materials, helping set up the inquiry process, advise students, mentor students, and most importantly, let the students do the work. So to go back to our essential questions for this presentation, we talked about what is inquiry. We talked about students actively seeking information to answer a question and then reporting on what they found. We talked about how inquiry relates with learning modalities and Dale's going to experience. And then we talked about some best practices as to how you as the instructor can effectively implement inquiry in your classroom. I would like to acknowledge that I borrowed some of this information from my colleague, Dr. Brian Myers, and I'd also like to point you towards this publication from the National Research Council, and so if you want to dig deeper into inquiry, this is a good place to look. 
if you'd like additional information on this topic, here's my contact information. I'd be glad to help you out in any way I can. Thanks and have a great day.